All right. We've been um, looking at one epistle after another all the way from Galatians. And now we have finally come to Thessalonians, the two letters to the Thessalonians, you know, the last uh, bit of arc portion. So um, let's just kind of um, summarize uh, what we have gone through so far, you know, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Um, basically, this is how the these churches got planted. And this is basically when and where Paul wrote the letters, uh, the first missionary journey. In the first missionary journey, Paul's main goal was to reach out to Southeast Asia Minor. That was the burden that God had laid on his heart. So he goes into Asia Minor and starts you know, traveling from one place to the next. And that is basically when, during his first missionary journey, he plants the Galatian church. So the Galatian church is planted during the first missionary journey. And then in the second missionary journey, his um, plan was to go back to Asia Minor and you know just go back to each of those churches which have been planted, encourage them, pray for them, you know, spend time with them. But then God had a different purpose. So even as he's trying to get into Asia Minor, he gets that vision from the Macedonians uh, asking, uh, him to go to them. So instead of going back to Asia Minor, he goes into Greece. He basically steps into Europe for the first time. So the, the you know the gospel is now uh, has now entered into uh, the borders of Europe. Uh, so uh, he goes over there, and there he plants the Philippian church. So the Philippian church gets planted um, at that during the second missionary journey um and then of course even uh, the thessalonian church which is also in macedonia that also gets planted during this second missionary journey but then he's not able to spend much time in thessalonica because the jewish people over there uh, oppose him very very strongly and he, even though he has planted the church he's he's forced to leave the church and uh, leave the city and in fact, these Jewish people who are opposing him, they follow him to Beria and try to create problems for him even in Beria. So, you know, it's a very tense situation that he goes through uh, when, when this Thessalonian church is planted. So during the second missionary journey, he goes into Europe for the first time. There in Macedonia, he establishes the Philippian church and the Thessalonian church. Then after... Um, uh, you know, facing all the opposition in Beria and in the, all the other places there. On the way back to Asia Minor, that is when he, he enters, re-enters into Asia Minor, and there he plants the Ephesian church. So the Ephesian church uh, gets planted around this time. So he plants it at this time. He leaves it in the hands of Aquila and Priscilla. And uh, from there, he moves to um, Corinth. He spends some time in Corinth. So while he's staying in Corinth, that is when he writes a letter to these Thessalonians. Because you see, um, they they kind of drove him out of the city. He could not spend much time with them. He was very concerned about them. So at some point of time, he sends Timothy over there just to inquire about them and find out what's going on. So Timothy stays for, for some time with the Thess Thessalonians, comes back and reports to Paul in Corinth. So at that time, Paul sits down in Corinth and he writes the first and second letters to the Thessalonians. So that's basically the background. And then just for us to know about the third missionary journey, the third missionary journey, not much travel happens uh, because he decides to spend three entire years in Ephesus. So that's one major thing about the third uh, missionary journey where he spends three entire years in Ephesus. At that time, he writes to the Galatians and at that time, he also writes First Corinthians. So it was around this time, you know, when in the in, during those three years when he was training a lot of people at Ephesus, one of the persons who got trained, Epaphras, goes to Colossae and plants the church in uh, Colossae. So these are all the things which happened. So then after these three missionary journeys, he ends up in prison because he wants to visit Jerusalem. And then when he visits Jerusalem, they, they, they arrest him. Uh, and he ends up in 
Rome. So it's after the three missionary journeys that he post imprisonment to Rome. And then during that imprisonment, he writes to the Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians, and he writes a separate letter to Philemon. Um, so all of this happens. So this is just a kind of you know overview of how these letters were, were written, when they were written, and when these churches were planted, you know, during which journeys they were planted. So uh, let's move into the Thessalonian uh, letter. Let's begin by looking at the background of the city. We don't really know much, uh, but we do know that Thessalonica was the capital of the, uh, of the uh, entire uh, Macedonian um, thing, province. Um, so in Macedonia, you have uh, um, Philippi, but Philippi is just one of the cities. Thessalonica, on the other hand, is the capital of the uh, Macedonian province. Now, Thessalonica was a um, coastal place. And this particular coastal city was situated on something called the Ignatian Way. You know, you had all these uh, land trade routes and the sea trade routes. So um, the Ignatian Way was one of those trade routes. And Thessalonica was sitting right there on the you know, uh, at, at a natural harbor where you can have a lot of ships coming in and bringing their merchandise and all of that. So because of that, Thessalonica became a very important commercial city. It was a rich city. And uh, um, usually wherever you have riches, you also have low moral standards. So Thessalonica was rich. Thessalonica was also into a lot of immorality. So. Um, the challenges which the Thessalonian church was facing, um, there were basically five different things that Paul deals with, you know, when he writes to them. First, they were facing a lot of persecution from their uh, local people, you know, because the local people were very unhappy that these Thessalonians have turned to the Lord. They have given up idol worship. They have, you know, forsaken all their idols. So the, the locals are very against them. They go through extremely severe persecution, is what we get to know uh, from, from Corinthians. Yeah, from Corinthians. And um, we also hear a little bit about that in the letter to the Philippians. And we also have mention made of it over here in the Thessalonian letters as well. There was a lot of persecution that these poor people went through, the believers in Thessalonica. Um, and there was this temptation you know, to take the easier path because the locals had very low uh, moral standards. There was a lot of uh, sexual uh, misbehavior. So there were the temptation was always there. And uh, so Paul writes to them, asking them, you know, to uh, stay faithful to the Lord. Um, also, there was a lot of uh, very um, childlike trusting, you know, um, confidence that Jesus is going to come soon and it's going to take them home. So they, they really believed the gospel which was given to them. They really believed that Jesus will come and take them. But what happened is that some people, they gave up their jobs you know, because they kind of assumed, they made an assumption that Jesus is going to come in the next uh, one or two years. So their idea was, why should we work hard? Uh, you know, let's just live off the more wealthy believers. So that was a really bad attitude. So some of them, instead of working hard and standing on their own feet, were happily relying on upon the other believers to support them, which is a very nasty thing to do because these believers were on the whole in a rather pathetic condition. Financially, they were in a very bad state because the locals had taken a strong dislike to them. So they were no longer you know, given job opportunities. They were ostracized from, you know, um, um, from any so social activities. So in a condition like that, where each family is trying to just survive, it was very, very wrong that some of them had given up their jobs and were just happily relying you know, on others to feed them and clothe them. Uh, so that is, a, that is another issue that uh, Paul had to deal with. Um, and uh, because they were very eagerly waiting for the second coming of Jesus, they got really worried when, when Jesus was delayed in, a, in their mind they felt that Jesus had delayed his coming. And in the meantime, there were some of the believers were dying. I mean, in the sense, they grew old and uh, they died. 
So they got really concerned. They were like, oh my goodness, uh, my family members have died and Jesus has not yet come. So what's going to happen to the ones who died? Because he has not come to collect us. And they died in the meantime. So Paul assures them, don't worry. You know, they've gone to heaven to be with the Lord. So when Jesus comes back at the second coming, they'll come along with him. You know, and so you'll actually get to see them. So uh, he gives them assurance regarding that. And yeah, some of them were kind of wanted to know about uh, when exactly Jesus will return. So that was another doubt which they had in their minds. So this is basically the data which Timothy collects from the Thessalonian church, you know, when he goes there to spend some time with them and inquire about them. And he takes back all of these issues to Paul, who is right now staying in Corinth. And when, Cor when Paul hears about this, he prays about all of it. And then he sits down and starts writing uh, a letter to them. To, de to address these specific issues. So that's basically the background um, regarding the first Thessalonian letter. So let's actually get into the letter itself. Um, if we could have someone read out for us, uh, maybe verses 1 um, up to verse 7. Uh, first Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 7, if someone could read out, please. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much. So we see that um, there are three leaders together writing this letter. Uh, so Paul includes, you know, Silvanus and Timothy with him uh, in uh, addressing the church in Thessalon Thessalonica. Silvanus is nobody but basically Silas. That's just the Latin uh, name that is given. You know, when they translated the Bible into Latin, uh, they made Silas into Silvanus. Uh, but basically, it's it's your it's your Silas, you know, who was along with uh, Paul in prison. You know, they both were singing over there in the Philippian jail uh, when they were uh, thrown into the jail. So that's basically your Silvanus is nobody but uh, so Silas. So Paul and Silas, um, they were, uh, you know, persecuted at Philippi. Uh, and then uh, the angel comes and sets them free. Uh, so we know the background of that. Silas was, in fact, quite an important um, missionary because not only did he accompany Paul on two of his missionary journeys, he in fact even accompanied Peter on missionary journeys. And in fact, he was very helpful to Peter in writing uh, the, you know, the letter, the epistle, which we call as First Peter. Uh, in fact, it is Silas who does the work of a scribe and writes it out for Peter. Peter probably would not have known that fancy way of writing letters know, the way uh, letters need to be written and all of that. So Silas, who probably had a more educated background, would have assisted Peter in putting his, you know, Peter's thoughts into the right kind of wordings. So which basically means that the Holy Spirit would have inspired Peter and would have also have assisted Silas in putting down the right wordings when that particular uh, letter was being uh, composed. So Silas was an important figure. Timothy, we know we already are, we are kind of familiar with him. So uh, these three leaders, you know, are addressing the Thessalonian church. And uh, Paul says over here, we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers, 
doesn't this remind us of something with that we read earlier you know in another letter that we thank you uh, that we thank god for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers sounds very familiar and when you look at uh, verse 3 it sounds even more familiar it's he says over there we remember before our god and father your work produced by faith labor produced by love and your endurance provide, inspired by hope so this whole the, the same trifecta of faith hope love is being mentioned even over here so where did we hear about hear all this uh, earlier that was in the colossian letter at the beginning of the colossian letter where Paul talks about the faith that they have in Christ Jesus, the love which they are showing towards God people, uh, God's people, and how this faith and love is springing up out of that hope which they have regarding their future. So you have that almost the same thoughts being echoed over here to the Thessalonian uh, church. So in two letters, if Paul has talked about faith, hope, and love. and in fact you have it mentioned also in our corinthians where he talks about how three of them are there are three great things faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love is what he says in the corinthian letter so if faith hope and love are something that paul emphasized again and again they must be important so we should you know look at ourselves examine ourselves and ask ourselves where is my faith you know what is the level of my love and in what condition is my hope so this is something that paul regarded as important i guess when he looked at each church he kind of assessed them to see where their faith was at which level their love was and in what condition their hope was maybe it was one way of him um, to ass- the, uh, one way that he could assess the spiritual condition of these churches so it's something that we should ask ourselves you know regarding our own personal uh, walk with god and also regarding the churches that we are ministering in um so what kind of a faith do we have is it a faith which is producing works you know that 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 are you know uh, contributing to the kingdom of god because here it says we remember before our god and father your work produced by faith and he says your labor prompted by love and he says your endurance inspired by hope in our lord jesus so what kind of work were these people doing it was not work which they were doing just for material benefits because somehow somewhere along the way work has become very uh, business like and uh, money oriented you know so even in ministry you know people just kind of you know uh, the same way they would search for jobs they search for ministries asking themselves okay which ministry can pay me the highest i'll go join there ministry was never meant to be money oriented so these people their work was produced by faith you see they had placed their faith in this jesus they were excited that he had given them this high status they were excited that he's going to come one day and collect them so they were working out of that enthusiasm not in a business like manner thinking okay how much can i get out of this no and in fact um, not even in so much you know in terms of what heavenly reward will i get will i get a big crown or a small crown it is not very business like at all so you know we need to learn from the attitude that these believers had so we'll dwell further on on the on these three aspects uh, when we come back from our break thank you